Hey there, and thanks for checking back in. I just got done making this x-ray tube. It's not tested. Keep on watching to find out what happens when we energize this. Here's a homemade x-ray tube. I put together um, by basically making a bunch of airtight T-joints, which were easier said than done. What I used here is a heated titanium coil as a getter to remove any residual traces of nitrogen and oxygen in the tube. Prior to activating the titanium getter, I first had to evacuate all of the, or most of the air out of the tube with a high vacuum pump. I used a two-stage rotary pump for that. The titanium getter doesn't remove every last molecule of gas, but it does do a pretty good job. There is still some residual gas in the tube, but you can actually make x-rays even if there's a small amount of gas is still present, which was the case here. One of the challenging parts of making this tube was getting a good tungsten to glass vacuum tight seal, which is what I'm showing you here. That ring of metal over there that you can see near the copper strike point is evaporated copper when I heated that join, that glass join there. Hopefully that will not affect the performance of this tube. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This black shiny coating on the glass is the evaporated titanium forming a titanium mirror. Okay, we're about to test the tube with a Tesla coil. This is prior to activating the getter. You can see how much air there is in. It's producing quite a lot of bright blue glow. So we're gonna have to remove those traces by activating the getter. Okay, now look, almost all the gas is gone. Very minimal residual glow. Now it's ready for testing. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Hopefully that residual gas won't mess it up. I'm about to apply 40,000 volts DC to the tube. As you probably noticed, I'm doing this whole thing remotely to avoid exposure to the fairly intense x-rays. One of the things that's stunning is just how bright the glass fluoresces. Another thing you likely noticed is this phosphorescence. After the energy is turned off, the glass continues to glow. When I reviewed the video, it looks like the phosphorescence is coming from this portion of the glass that's been contaminated with a layer of copper metal. This is where the copper evaporated and condensed on the inner surface of the glass. This portion is the one that appeared to phosphoresce. And if anyone has any ideas as to why, I'd be really interested to see, see what you have to say about that because I couldn't figure out uh, how copper would do that to glass. The next phase of the uh, video is to do an experiment and test whether the X-ray tube has enough energy to produce a green glow in the fluorescent screen material from an x-ray cartridge. So this is an x-ray cartridge and it comes with two of these fluorescent uh, x-ray screens. As we just saw, the tube fluoresces really brightly. So we don't want that light getting through this film. So the back of the film has got this dark black sponge-like material on it, which prevents light from getting through. So if this, if this side is placed above the x-ray tube and the camera is placed uh, on top during the film, then we'll be able to see um, the actual glow of the uh, film when exposed to x-rays. So here's the fluorescent screen material that glows when it's exposed to x-rays. We've supported this above the tube using insulators and we're going to apply 40,000 volts to the tube. Let's begin. So as you can see here, it lights it up pretty well. I think this is going to work for making x-ray pictures. Okay, next I'm going to see if I can visualize this PCB. I'm going to put this in between the x-ray tube and this 
this film and see if it shows up. Let's begin. Okay, I'm activating the tube. Yep, and it's working. I can see the circuit board showing up. It's attenuating the x-rays. Now remember that the x-rays produced by this device are not filtered in any way. When you go into a hospital or a medical setting and have x-rays done, there's usually different types of metal filters that will only let certain energies of the x-rays pass through. So this is fairly broad spectrum in terms of energies. And if a thin piece of aluminum or a thin piece of rhodium or other similar metals were used to filter these, I could get even cleaner images. So as you can see, you can get kind of a picture with this um, using um, fluorescent green screen material from an x-ray cartridge. What I plan to do in a future video is actually use this. This is actually dental film. It's called dental film or Eco 30. It's still uh, before its expiry date. So I'm assuming it's good. And let me look at the films. So they're not real big. That's, that's the actual film. So here's my hand. So the film is actually pretty small compared with my hand. And it comes with its own developer. I think you have to squeeze this and it pops here and goes onto the film. You take your x-ray, you squeeze this, you gotta squeeze the developing solution down and let it uh, sit with this film for about 50 seconds. And then you squeeze it back out of there. And then you remove the film and I think it's got a little raised area where you can tear it to, to get the film out. Here's the raised area right here. You rip, rip that off and then it's, so it's basically a uh, whole developing solution and film all in one package. So I'm going to test these out with this tube and see if I can actually um, x-ray something small. And uh, we'll do that uh, on our next video. But I do appreciate you checking in, folks, and hope you uh, like this video. And if you do, please uh, like, like and subscribe. And also hit the bell so I, when I come up with another video, you'll be the first to know about it. Thanks for watching. Check back soon.